Paul Dixie here. The colder months are upon us and I try to avoid backpacking and camping in the colder slash winter months because one, I hate being cold and two, you tend to see less wildlife the colder it gets. But that hasn't always worked out for me and I've ended up on trail when the temperatures drop and I've frozen a lot out there. So I decided to ask those of y'all who actually enjoy being out there when it's freezing cold, some tips and tricks to stay warm. That way folks like me who aren't real experienced with that can learn. Also, I'm gonna be starting the Arizona Trail in the spring when it's still pretty cold out in Arizona. So I'm hoping I can take some of this with me and apply it out there. First, somebody suggested that when you are walking down the trail, actually hiking for the day and you stop to take a break whether that's for a snack or to get water etc immediately put on a layer because now that you're not in motion your body temperature is going to start cooling down and you want to try to prevent even getting cold instead of waiting until you've gotten chilled and then you try to catch up and warm yourself up also along those same lines when you get to the spot that you're going to camp for the day Typically, you're warm and cozy from where you've been exerting energy backpacking and carrying weight. And a lot of folks want to sit down and take a break before they go to setting up their tent and getting prepared for the evening. But it's really a better idea if you go on and set up your stuff immediately before you sit down and again get chilled. And then you can pull off your clothes that might be damp from sweat and put on your warmer, drier clothes for the night. That way you're, again, not in the situation where you're getting chilled and then having to try to warm up. You just try to prevent getting cold in the first place. Tent site selection. Where you camp can definitely contribute to how warm or how cold you're gonna be at night. Keep in mind that valleys tend to have cold air settle down into them, pushing the warm air up, heat rises. So you kinda wanna try to find that sweet spot. You wanna avoid camping down at the bottom of the valley, but also if you go to the top of a peak, that's typically where things are more exposed and really windy. So the idea is to find that sweet spot of being high enough up that you're not just sitting down in that cold air, but also where you can have some sort of wind block, whether that's with boulders, trees, shrubs, etc. I guess I said tent site selection, but really, campsite selection for those of y'all who use different shelters. This next one is a pretty well-known tip in the backpacking community, but that is to layer up. And what that means is you, you don't wanna wear just one bulky item to try to keep yourself warm. It's really better if you work in layers, like having a base layer and then some sort of mid or insulating layer, and then maybe some sort of waterproof slash windproof shell like rain gear. That way, while you're out hiking, if you're on a climb and you're exerting more energy, you notice yourself starting to get a little warm, you can shed one of those layers, and that way you're not now having to decide between freezing cold or burning up hot. The goal while you're backpacking in the colder months is to try to prevent yourself from sweating. So having layers and being able to adjust how much insulation you have, it really helps regulate your body temperature better, prevents you from sweating and then getting wet and cold. Also, chances are, even though you try to prevent yourself from sweating, you're likely gonna sweat while you're out backpacking. So you wanna make sure that you have some sort of material on that keeps you insulated even if it does get damp, like wool, for example. Merino wool is something that a lot of people wear as a base layer while they're backpacking. You definitely want to avoid cotton because cotton does not dry quickly and it tends to hold in that moisture and can lead to hypothermia, especially in the colder months. I kind of mentioned this before about changing into pajamas, but I wanted to put some more emphasis on it. You really should have a spare set of clothing that you keep warm and dry specifically for sleeping in. Because while it is easy to get lazy out on trail, in colder temperatures it can be dangerous. Again, if your clothing is damp and sweaty and you might not even notice that it is, but just having a set of dry clothes can really make a difference. So you wanna make sure that you change into some dry clothing before you go to sleep at night. 
I like to have a separate base layer to sleep in and then another insulating layer. So maybe during the day, if I'm hiking in the cold, my insulating layer will be a fleece because it'll still function if it gets wet for some reason. Whereas my down puffy, when I used to use down, would not function and would be pretty much useless if it were to get wet. So I'd keep that specifically for sleeping in or at camp at night. One commenter said that she 100% swears by her down britches that she sleeps in rather than wool leggings. I've never tried those. If you're not allergic to down and you can use down, then those sound fantastic. One tip I heard specifically about nighttime clothes is try not to go to bed with your full get up on. And it sounds a little contradictory to me because I freeze so much at night. That's the first thing I do when I'm fixing to go to bed. I make sure I have all of my layers on, sometimes even my rain gear if it's really cold outside. But this person suggested that in doing so, you've been up moving around, your blood's flowing, you put all that stuff on and you fall asleep. And if you've got a warm sleeping bag and then all of these warm layers, you might actually start to break a sweat inside of your sleeping bag. And then your clothes are slightly damp, you've gotten moisture inside your sleeping bag, and now you set yourself up to be shivering all night. So this is something I've never tried, but what this person suggested is start with maybe just your base layer, your socks, and your beanie. And then if you notice you're still cold after a while, well then put on your insulating layer and some of your extra stuff. But especially for warmer sleepers, that does make sense. Next, your food and water choices can help contribute to keeping you warm. Staying hydrated is always a great idea. And this is something that I really have to remind myself of when it's cold. Because when I'm cold, the last thing I want to do is drink cold water. So having hotter liquids and food is definitely a morale booster for me, but also helps me actually to drink more and to warm me in my core. Taking in enough calories is very important because that's how your body works to keep itself warm. So especially a snack right before you go to bed, something that's high in fat like, for example, peanut butter or chocolate, cheese if you carry that, especially in colder temperatures, carrying cheese works out well without it getting all weird and slimy. Another tip as far as sleeping bags go or quilts is make sure you have the right one for you. Some of us are warmer sleepers, some of us are colder sleepers, so testing out your sleeping bag or quilt in the temperatures that you're planning to be backpacking in before you get out to the wilderness is a good idea. So if that means camping in your backyard, then so be it. I've said this before in videos where I talk about quilts and sleeping bags, but you want to pay attention to the temperature rating. Whatever that set degrees is, like I've got a 20 degree bag for example, you want to make sure that if you're going to go backpacking in 20 degree weather that your sleeping bag or quilt is rated for a 20 degree comfort rating because there is a difference in comfort rating and survival rating. If it's just survival, sure, it'll keep you alive to 20 degrees, but are you going to be shivering all night? Also, the size is important. You don't want a sleeping bag that's way too big for you and obviously not too tight to where you can't zip it up, but especially if you have one that's got too much dead space, your body's having to heat up all of that space. So to help with some of the dead space, because all of us will have some dead space in our quilts and sleeping bags, you can put extra dry clothing that you've got with you. If the outfit you're gonna wear for the next day is dry for sure, then that could be a nice tip or trick too to help you get going in the morning by putting those clothes in your sleeping bag so when you wake up, they hadn't been sitting in the corner of the tent getting cold, they've actually been warming up so they're more comfortable to put on. Also, when you get to camp and you get your shelter set up, throw out your sleeping bag as soon as you get a chance, especially if you're using a down quilt or bag so it has time to loft and then trap in your warmth when you get into it at night. Because when it's been compressed in your pack all day, it really needs that time to get fluffy again. Don't forget to keep your head, hands, and feet warm. It's easy to think about layers for the rest of the body, but those are areas that can make you miserable if you don't keep them warm. In Iceland, I had a thicker wool beanie that I really liked because it kept my head warm even after it got damp from it sleeting and raining and snowing, etc. 
And then at night, I had the hood from my puffy jacket. For my hands, what I've found works well if I need to be waterproofed is using possum down gloves as a liner and then the Showa Timris 281 gloves. I've shared before Andrew Skirka's review of those and I'll put it again in the description of this video, but I would love to hear what y'all winter pros think as far as keeping your hands warm during the day. You can put that in the comments below. For my feet at night, I had some down booties that I really loved before I had to give up down, so now I'm just back to some thick wool socks. Another tip as far as sleeping bags go is not to bury your face down in your sleeping bag or quilt. I've done that before and it just seems like the go-to thing if you're really cold, especially if your face is cold, but our hot breath causes condensation on the inside of the sleeping bag and then you just end up damp and cold. So what you can do to keep your face warm is to wear something like a buff or some kind of face mask if you're in really cold temperatures. I've never actually done that while sleeping before. I've worn a buff on my face while hiking, but that's a tip that I'm gonna have to try in the future. One thing that I have used in colder temperatures and I think they're an absolute godsend is hand warmers. This one's actually a bigger body warmer, but these will typically last up to 10 hours. They even make ones that have like little sticky backings that you could put on your socks. But I will warn you, you don't want to put them directly next to your skin and then fall asleep because they will get hot enough to where they can burn you. Going backpacking with a buddy always helps because one, misery loves company, and two, having extra body heat inside a tent really does make a difference. So even if it's you and your dog, but of course make sure your dog is a dog that likes the colder temperatures and being out there and that you have them properly taken care of if you've got them out in colder temperatures or any time for that matter. One person said they like to set up their tent earlier in the day when the sun is still shining because they really feel like it helps heat the tent up and kind of trap in some of that warmth before they go to sleep. Peeing. This is something that you should definitely do right before you go to bed. Now, some people tell you you should pee before you go to bed because laying in your tent at night, especially if you're trying to hold your pee and not get up and go, you can waste energy where your body's trying to keep itself warm and then has to keep that urine warm. So it actually makes you colder because you're wasting that energy. I kind of see where that school of thought is coming from, but also there are people who say, well, the pee is already warm and since liquid or water tends to hold that warmth, then maybe it actually helps keep you warm by holding it. I haven't really found anything definitive on either argument. So I'll just say that I think you should pee right before you go to bed at night. That way you don't have to get up and get cold again, having to go out in the middle of the night to pee. Now, if you're somebody who has to pee, even if you go right before you go to sleep, you're just like a clock, you gotta get up in the middle of the night to go, then having a pee bottle might help. Now, if you're a fella having a wide mouth Gatorade bottle or something like that uh, would be convenient. But if you're a lady, you might think, well, how in the world am I supposed to ring that? Well, they make urinary devices, like I've mentioned before, the she we the pee style, but you definitely wanna practice that before you get out on the trail and you're in your tent trying to figure it out and then you end up soaking everything. Wear sunscreen. This is something that a lot of folks don't think about when it's cold outside. And I myself have made this mistake when I was on the Appalachian Trail at the beginning of my through hike it was cold out, so I just didn't think about protecting myself from the sun. But especially in the winter months or after fall and all the leaves have come down from the trees, you're really exposed to the elements. Now, if it's really cold outside, a lot of your body's probably gonna be covered up with long sleeve clothing and britches. But if you do get a day that's kind of warmer during the day and then cooler at night, you might find yourself shedding some of your clothes. So you just wanna make sure that you keep your face, your hands, and any skin exposed, covered up with sunscreen. That way you don't find yourself chilled at night because now you've got the sunburn. And also you just don't wanna be sunburned. I've seen it recommended for sleeping pads to have an R value of at least five if you're gonna be doing winter backpacking and camping. Some people say they take their inflatable pads 
and also stack it with a closed cell foam pad to add extra warmth. So if you don't want to go out and buy an insulated sleeping pad and spend a lot more money, you can add our value to the sleeping pad you already have by getting a closed cell foam pad and those are relatively cheap. But our value does work in that way where if you have a material or a sleeping pad that has an R value of say three and then you add a closed cell foam pad or something else that has an R value of a two, then you have a total R value of a five. Some people even supplement their inflatable pad, closed cell foam pad, either or with an emergency blanket just to add some more R value and help reflect the heat of their body. One tip that I've heard for years to stay warm at night that I've not actually tried is warming up water and putting it in something like an algae bottle. Well, typically I don't have an algae bottle with me because they're on the heavier side, but maybe in the winter months it's worth the wait. One lady said she likes to put it in a stainless steel bottle because then she can just warm up the water in the bottle next to the fire. And then you can just cuddle with it or put it between your thighs. Somebody also suggested getting a rubber hot water bottle on Amazon and using that. So all of these could be good ideas, but I would just say if you go this route, make sure that whatever you use does not leak or maybe to have redundancy, you can put it in a Ziploc, but I feel like those could just bust open pretty easily. Or maybe a dry sack of some sort, like a Dyneema dry sack, just to make sure if it is leaking, hopefully you don't end up soaked. And finally, one commenter said that he made a pot cozy and had some leftover Reflectix material. So he used that as a sit pad type deal, but also at night he likes to put that down in the bottom of his foot box on his sleeping bag to help kind of reflect some of that heat from his feet back up onto himself. So that's all I have for you today on tips and tricks for staying warm when it's freezing cold outside. I wanna say thank you to everybody who made a recommendation and also were willing to share their pictures. If any of y'all who are watching have experience with winter backpacking and camping, I would love for you to share your tips and tricks in the comments below if you didn't hear them in this video. Because again, all of us folks who have been maybe a little timid to get out there want to actually enjoy it if we do go in the dead of winter. All right, y'all. Well, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go, and we will see y'all next time.